go. Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. Uh, this is Tuesday. We begin with the opening sentence. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful, merciful Father, Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways, ways like, like my sheep. We have followed, followed too much vices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have, have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no, is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord and grant to the Lord most merciful Father for his sake that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And I'll do the Venite. O come, come let, let us sing, sing unto, the unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come, come before his presence, presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves How glad in him with songs. With songs. For the, the Lord, Lord is a great God, God and a great, great King above, above all gods. In his hand are, are all the depths of the earth, earth and the, the heights, heights of the hills, hills are his, are his also. also. The sea is his, for he made, he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. land. O oh, come, come, let us worship and fall down and, and, and kneel before, before the Lord our Maker. For he, he is our, our God, and, and we are the people of his, his pasture and, and the sheep, sheep of his, his hand. Okay. We'll now have the psalm reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 139. We will read responsibly by half verse. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You have known my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You examine my path and my places of rest. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my tongue. But you, O Lord, know it altogether. You have enclosed me behind and before, and have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. So excellent I cannot attain to it. Where shall I go then from your spirit? Or where shall I fly, flee to your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there shall your hand lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. Then shall my night be turned to day. Even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and the light to you are both alike. For you yourself made my inmost part. You knit me together in my mother's womb. 
I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My bones were not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and fashioned in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my substance while I was yet unformed. And in your book were all my members written. Which day by day were fashioned. When as yet there was none of them. How dear to me are your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I wake up, I am present with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, you bloodthirsty men. For they speak unrighteously against you. Your enemies take your name uh, in vain. Do I not hate those, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? Indeed, I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. Look well if there be any way of wickedness in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Glory be, Glory be to, the to the Father, Father and to the and Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever, ever shall, shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. The first lesson today is number, from Numbers 24, beginning with the 24th chapter, the first verse. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go, as at other times, to look for omens, but set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam, the son of Baor, the oracle of the man whose eye is open, the oracle of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, falling down with his eyes uncovered. Oh, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch afar, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall be in the waters. His king shall be higher than Agag and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt and is for him like the horns of the wild ox. He shall eat up the nations, his adversaries, and shall break their bones in pieces and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down like a lion and like a lioness. Who will rouse him up? Blessed are those who bless you and cursed are those who curse you. Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them these three times. Therefore, now flee to your own place. I said, I will certainly honor you, but the Lord has held you back from honor. And Balaam said to Balak, Did I not tell your messengers whom you sent to me? Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the word of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord speaks, that will I speak. And now, behold, I am going to my people. Come, I will let you know what this people will do to your people in the later days. And he took up his discourse and said, The oracle of Balaam, the son of Baor, the oracle of the man whose eye is opened, the oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down the sons of Sheth, Edom shall be dispossessed. Fear also, his enemies, shall be dispossessed. Israel is doing valiantly. 
one from Jacob shall exercise dominion and destroy the survivors of cities. And he looked on Amalek and took up his discourse and said, Amalek was the first among the nations, but its end is utter destruction. And he looked on the Kenite and took up his discourse and said, Enduring is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned when Asher takes you away captive. And he took up his discourse and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But Shiph shall come from Kittim and shall afflict Asher and Eber, and he too shall come to utter destruction. And Balaam rose and went back to his place. And Balak also went his way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now do the Tadeum Laudamus together. We praise you, praise O God. O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church proclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit. Advocate and God. and guide. You, Christ, you, Christ are, are the King of glory, the eternal Son, Son of the Father. Father. When you took our How flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the, the virgin's womb. womb. You overcame Open the sting of death and opened Open the kingdom of heaven. of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come, come to be our, our judge. judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood, blood and bring us with your saints, your saints to, to glory, glory everlasting. The second lesson is from Luke chapter 1, starting at the 24th verse. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age will, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will recall me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The word of the Lord. We'll now say the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to set his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide those who govern us. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Call it for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults for enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
colic for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. A collect for times of social conflict or unrest. Increase, O oh God, the spirit of neighborliness among us, that in peril we may uphold one another, in suffering tend to one another, and in homelessness, loneliness, or exile befriend one another. Grant us brave and enduring hearts, that we may strengthen one another, until the disciplines and testing of these days are ended, and you again give peace in our time, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the time for intercession and thanksgiving. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, our unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us, to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth our, your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for morning prayer this morning. I want to thank Rita, who uh, did uh, the readings today. And there were uh, one or two technical glitches. And uh, as I, I like to say, uh, these days that you know we're we're fixing the uh, plane uh, as it's in the air and uh, all the technical glitches uh, th those are on um, my end as uh, the uh, producer of uh, these videos and so uh, may God bless you and I have a few words uh, of my homily in a moment. It's an extraordinary scene, isn't it? If the passage in Luke we have this morning uh, many uh, amazing aspects of this, but I, I want to focus in on Mary and uh, her response to this amazing promise that is made that she uh, is going to be the, the bearer of the Son of God. What extraordinary confidence she has in the promises of God um, coming through uh, the angel, the deliverer of the, the promise uh, to her. We have uh, uh, in verse uh, 26, Gabriel goes to, to Nazareth uh, to visit Mary, uh, and uh, the angel says, greetings, O favor one, the Lord is with you. Mary, uh, greatly troubled, tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be, and the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, you found favor with God, and, and then he, he tells her the story of what, what, what is going to happen. You will conceive Bear a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David and reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? And so the angel explained uh, what was going to, to happen. 
and concludes by saying this for nothing will be impossible with god and and mary says behold i am a servant of the lord let it be to me according to your word she accepted the the, the promise of of god and the angel left uh, an amazing testament uh, to th th this very young person's faithfulness and understanding of, of her distinct role with God's salvation that would that would materialize literally uh, through the, the coming of Jesus and the birth of Jesus. The Holy Spirit had a, a specific thing to, to, to say uh, through her in an understanding of, of her special and unique role of bearing the, the Son of God. Uh, and it, it's known by its Latin name, the Magnificat, starting in verse 46. Uh, when uh, Mary is visiting the home of her uh, relative Elizabeth. And Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he's looked on the humble estate of his servant. And, and it's good to recall, you know, Mary, very, very humble origins, right? For behold, from now on all generations will we call, call me blessed for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. And, and what is being said here is a, a, a forth telling of uh, responses to the birth of Jesus and what's going to happen when people begin to understand uh, who he is and, and what he has come to accomplish uh, to, to be the, the savior of the world. And there are going to be those who, who, who see, see him as savior and deliverer and others that uh, hate that because that their power, their authority is, is going to be, uh, you know, dealt with and uh, overturned and, you know, and, and the religious authorities did, you know, they just hated that. It is a at the very beginning uh, of the, the arrival of Jesus a sense of what will happen and, and, and what significance that the birth of Jesus will have. It, you know, it, this is formally known as the Annunciation, you know, when the the, the news is announced to, to Mary, and she becomes, you know, aware uh, through the Holy Spirit of of the, the magnitude of uh, the birth of Jesus. But uh, on another level, it, it goes to show how how God uses the ordinary for extraordinary purposes. He used someone like Mary to 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 be the the, the bearer of the savior of the world. That same savior comes to us, ordinary people, to, to be our deliverer, our rescuer, our Lord who loves us enough to come to us with the humility as a person who bore our sins and and loves us uh, enough to have died for us an extraordinary god with an extraordinary love who comes to us as our savior and for all that jesus 
has done for us. We're, we're grateful, we're thankful, and, and, and thankful that God doesn't, uh, in, in, in the past, hasn't you know, used it, the, the extraordinary for his purposes. He used someone like Mary Elizabeth to come to our world to show us his purpose, to show us his love. And for that, we're thankful. Amen. This concludes our Tuesday morning prayer service. Again, thanks to, to Rita. And we're going to be having uh, more uh, faces and voices uh, in these uh, morning prayer sessions as uh, we uh, progress and keep rolling down the road. And uh, so I hope you enjoy uh, the, the, these additional folks who are uh, helping out with morning prayer. God bless you. See you soon.